Associate Professor David Ziegler. Thank you for joining me today on AJ Asks. Thank you for having me. Great to be here. First of all, can you tell us what DIPG is? Sure. So DIPG stands for Diffuse Intrinsic Pontine Glioma, which is basically a very nasty, very aggressive brain tumour, um, really in the most critical part of the brain. So it's in part of the brain called the pons or the brainstem, which is the bit of the brain that controls, you know, the most basic functions, breathing, your heartbeat, really the most critical things for life. And, and this is a very nasty tumour that grows within that region. Why is DIPG so aggressive? That's a really good question. And there's a few reasons. One is that it's in the most critical part of the brain. So you can't operate on it. You can't cut it out because that would be uh, too dangerous. Genetically, a very nasty tumour. So it's sort of resistant to a lot of therapies just by the way all the genetic changes in the tumour. And thirdly, it's actually in a part of the brain that's very protected. So there's what's called the blood-brain barrier, which actually stops drugs from getting into the brain. And normally is there to protect the brain from poisons and toxins, but it actually stops medicines from getting in as well. So it's very hard, very difficult to treat. You just can't get effective therapies into that part of the brain. What made you interested in focusing on DIPG treatment? Uh, I guess I became most interested in it um, when you know, I started seeing patients with DIPG and for almost every other cancer, you know, we have some treatment that, you know, even if it's only a small chance of working, we know at least there's a chance. And for most kids cancer, there's a really good chance. Uh, most kids with cancer are cured. But this was the one tumour where actually there is no chance. There's nothing that works. Um, so it's really was clear that we needed to make a difference. And the other important thing was no one was doing research on it. When I first talked about it with scientists at the Cancer Institute, no one even knew what it was. And that was because it's so hard to operate on. Actually, there were no specimens in the lab for, for scientists to actually do research on. So that's when we decided we've got to do something and make a difference for these kids. So what will your research mean for children with DIPG? I guess the first step is actually providing hope. We are moving now from a place where there was absolutely no hope, there were no treatments, to now for the first time we actually have treatments that we're trying, we have trials that are open. We can actually sit down with parents and children and say, actually, there's a choice of a few different drugs that we can actually try. So that's really the first thing is that we're, we're offering hope and we're offering treatments where there previously were none. And ultimately, we're aiming to find that cure, to find the, the magic bullet that will change the outcome for these kids. What is oronofen? Oronofen is a drug that's been around for a long, long time. It actually contains gold. It's part of how it's made. And it's been used for many years to, as an anti-inflammatory drug to treat diseases like rheumatoid arthritis. And so when we started looking for drugs that were active against DIPG, we screened drugs that did anything. We weren't just interested in anti-cancer drugs, but we wanted drugs, any drug that would be available that we could get quickly um, to start treating kids. And this just popped up, you know, completely unexpected nothing that we would have thought of had we not done this experiment and, and just screened thousands of different drugs. It's really exciting because it's one of the few that works not just in the test tube, but also in our animal models. So we still have more work to do in the lab. And it's thanks to the Kids Cancer Project and all the supporters of the Kids Cancer Project that we're able to continue that work. And once we have enough data in the lab, that's when we're planning to bring it and actually start treating children with it. Do you share your research with people in Australia or around the world? Absolutely. We work very closely with um, other researchers, both in the laboratory and doing clinical trials in Australia and internationally. Actually, the first person in the world to grow DIPG cells was very generous and sent them to us. And that was really what helped us get kick-started. And to this day, we share our cells, we share our models, we share our ideas, we meet regularly via Zoom with other researchers. And, you know, that's the best way to make this research go as fast as possible to help as many children as possible. What's the most exciting research you've been involved in so far? 
We test thousands of drugs and most of them don't do anything. But when you see something that actually works, something that's attacking those DIPG cells and doing the job, that's incredibly exciting. And the most exciting thing is if that's actually doing something in patients in a child because that's almost unheard of. And we are starting to see that, you know, with some of these drugs that we are testing, we are starting to see it actually working in patients. You can't get more exciting than that. Finally, if you could design your own kid's cancer project bear, what would it be? (laughs) I actually don't know what my answer is to that question. Aside to say, you know, I would probably leave that to the experts in that field and I'll focus on trying to find a cure for brain cancer. Thank you for being on my show today, David Ziegler. It's been very nice having you. Oh, thank you so much for having me and thanks for asking all those great questions and I look forward hopefully to coming back and telling you about what we've been able to discover. Yeah, that would be great. Fantastic. Do you have any questions you'd like asked? Leave them in the comments below and they could come up in future episodes of AJ Asks.